Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. I'm doing a review today on Girls of Paper and Fire. So if you don't know what this story is about, it's basically about a girl who gets taken from her home and her land, and she is sent to basically the kingdom, the main palace, where she is then put as a paper girl. Now paper girls are essentially human girls who basically are trained to be the king's sexual entertainment and that's kind of where the story is and how she really doesn't want to be there and kind of acts out about it. That's kind of the over synopsis of Girls of Paper and Fire. Overall, I like the book, but I thought it was an okay book. However, I did have some technical problems with it. Just the overall storyline I didn't really fall into. I wasn't that keen on some of the characters and the storyline was a little bit bland, but I did enjoy a lot of the side characters. I enjoyed the LBTQ relationship within the book, and I did appreciate some of the writing within the novel. And that's really all I can say about my non-spoilery review. Um, I think this is a first. This is a first to many books, so maybe the second one will be better. However, I'm kind of debating on whether I would want to read the second book just because of my opinions on the first, but. Um, if you want to be spoiled or have read the book, you can continue on with my spoiler review. Alright people, hi. The notebook is back. And I have some thoughts on Girls of Paper and Fire. Let's just start off at the beginning. So she has this kind of normal-ish life. And then she ends up being taken, kind of just like how her mother was taken. At the beginning, the, the dog dies it's very very sad <laughs> i knew that there was rape violence and animal cruelty within this book but and i and I, so i knew something was going to happen but as soon as like i saw the moment i kind of had to skip over it i really couldn't even read it which is really weird i couldn't i couldn't do it the dog dies which is really sad and unfortunate she's taken like i said like her mom was taken um years before well i got a sense of how the world worked. I really did not understand this world. I always have a problem when it comes to creatures. I just have a problem of seeing human slash creatures like like there were in this book. Like how the um, the guy, like how a person could have like, like boar's legs or a head of a cow. I just, I just don't picture that. Even though it can be, it can be said to me and I'll try and picture it. It just doesn't come off like that. So even then, I think that's just a personal reading thing. Nothing to do with the character because she does explain a lot of that very well. I just really, I just end up, I'll see it for when it's said, but when they're talking, I kind of just picture two humans. I, it's how, it's how I, it's how I read. So it's like, so while um, I get that there are like that um, these animalistic qualities do come in handy for some people and all this type of stuff, I kind of just still pictured humans. Some things I did like about this um, book is the LBTQ romance. So Lee and Ren's relationship, I loved how it was, um, I didn't really know much about this book so coming into it when she started having feelings for Ren, I'm like oh my god, they're gonna, they're gonna end up together and I was actually really excited. I rarely read books about LGBTQ um, relationships so it was really cute to see especially in a fantasy book about the, with the main characters I really appreciated it however I did think it was so insta lovey while I do think it was so they, they had really cute moments I did think I'm like oh my god she loves her already and she just met her kind of thing while I did really enjoy the romance there also was an element missing for me I don't even know what the element was it might have just been taste of like how I like romances to have this kind of angst and I think that's what was missing for me. I think they got together and then they were just together and it kind of didn't have this like angstiness. So the main character Lee with the golden eyes. So she's already like the ninth person and then the other girl has to leave and so now she's the eighth person and she's still treated like an outsider. But the thing is is that she goes and she has everything to lose within this world and yet she still sucks at being a paper girl. I just thought that knowing she has everything to lose, like wouldn't she be more 
like willing to be the best that she can be. Her attitude didn't seem to link up with her with like her with her actions. So like she would say how she can't let people down, she can't let her father die because if she's bad, then the other guy they'll go back and kill her father and um, the other woman, and then she's like sucking at paper training. I just thought she would try like extra extra hard to be really good at it and then she's not and it just kind of the internal thoughts and the actions just kind of didn't match up for me. And then when she trips in front of the king I couldn't even read it. I was like oh my god she didn't and I was like oh this poor girl. And the whole time I just really wanted her to succeed and she just kept on not succeeding and it really bugged me for some weird reason. But other than that, I really like the other ladies in the house. I thought they were well scripted of how much like some people, how at what lengths people will go to to like please the king and how some girls like think that they're in love with each other and all of this stuff. I thought it was very well done of how um, you can be immersed into some worlds and societies and think that some that these things that m are not really okay like turn out like how they think it's in the end kind of okay that you know because the king loves me that's why but you're a paper girl and you were taken from your family and you have to be here. It's like but he loves me so it's kind of that whole dynamic, I think she did very well. And so halfway, I wish we would have gotten more of the training and being there, cause they kind of go into like this little period of training and then bam, you're the king's subjects and need to like go please him. And then that's like more than half the book. And then suddenly you find out Ren is like this badass fighter chick and then that she needs to kill the king. I, it just came a little bit out of nowhere a little bit, a lot out of nowhere and then in the end she has to leave because her mom dies and so she leaves conveniently like the day or night or morning before she's supposed to kill the king and then Lee has to do it it just like was like they were going like this and then somehow it just missed it just missed like you just didn't see it coming and there were so many other options for who could have killed the king like what's his face the guy Cor Cazzo, Corzo I think I wrote his name down no I didn't oops Daisy you know who I'm talking about the guy who's one of the king's like confidants and he could have killed him like they're way more matched and the king has already already has it out for Lee for like turning him down like three times it's like why would you even give this to her? Okay, so she can, she can get close to the king, but can't she get close to the king and take him somewhere where, like, the Kazo guy could, like, ambush him? It just doesn't, it just didn't make sense. Kenzo. I was kind of right. His name's Kenzo, right? So it just, and that's, this is why I kind of am so weird about this book because it, like, started off really good, and if it was more of, like, a training book and then at the end maybe something happens where she like with the king and she's forced to flee instead of trying to kill him I think it would have made for a better story and then she actually like stabs him and like kills him but then he survives it was I just don't know and then he's like half B I just it just didn't a lot of it just didn't link up I think some of it just doesn't it just didn't sit there well for me I think that's why I gave it a three out of five I gave one star pretty much for like the development of like the story because I really thought it was interesting the paper girl story I really enjoyed the romance within it even though some of it just was a little bit eh for me while the world did frustrate me I did appreciate the world however the creatures within the world just didn't match up for me and there are some aspects like the training parts and like learning how to like seduce a man that I really did enjoy um with those side characters and I think that's kind of why I gave it a three out of five I did read it in one day so and it did keep me engaged enough so I really did enjoy it in those aspects but the other couple of stars just didn't do it for me I didn't think it was the best book in the world I thought it was an okay book and maybe the series will get better but I'm already not the biggest fan of like the creatures within this world and storyline and where it went so who knows if I'll be continuing on but I just thought I'd put this out there and mostly for me so I can know where I left off and what happened and how I felt but just to see if you guys have any of the similar 
opinions because I know this book either gets really really praised or people just think it's an eh okay book and I really want to know what other people think about it. I just thought it was an okay three out of five stars first book to a series. Let me know if you liked it. Let me know if you're going to continue on what you're thinking of it, where you think the story is going because after that half thing and the whole kill the king came on when I thought it was going to go this way. It just, I just have no idea where the story will go. So let me know what you think, what you liked, maybe what you didn't like about it. And just let me know your thoughts. Other than that, thank you for listening. And I will see you guys in my next video.